Welcome to the Harrison Podcast Series. This podcast is entitled ECG Diagnosis Left Bundle Branch Block. The learning objective for this podcast is to be able to diagnose left bundle branch block using ECG criteria. Let's set the scene. On morning rounds, your attending, without warning, hands you the following ECG and asks for your interpretation. What is your ECG diagnosis? I'll give you more time with the ECG. Pause the podcast if you need more time to review it. That's correct. Left bundle branch block. Given the title of this podcast, making that diagnosis was unlikely to be a challenge. However, Now I would ask you to tell me why it's a left bundle branch block. In other words, what are the ECG criteria that you use to make the diagnosis of left bundle branch block? I'll give you the EKG again. We will now review the five ECG criteria for left bundle branch block. The first criteria is that the QRS duration must be greater than 120 milliseconds or three small boxes. This shows you on our ECG that the QRS duration is greater than 120 milliseconds or three small boxes. On this EKG, the QRS is probably about 140 milliseconds. The second criteria is a delayed intrinsicoid deflection of greater than 50 milliseconds and leads one V5, and V6. I know what you're thinking. Intrinsicoid deflection? What does that even mean? Intrinsicoid deflection is simply the time from the onset of the QRS complex to the peak of the R wave, shown here in lead V5, and it needs to be greater than 50 milliseconds. The third ECG criteria is a broad monophasic R wave in leads 1 V5 and V6 that are usually notched or slurred. Looking at leads 1, V5, and V6, you will see that the QRS complexes in lead 1 and V5 are notched and the QRS complex in lead 6 is slurred. The fourth ECG criteria are secondary STT wave changes in the opposite direction of the major QRS deflection. You will see in leads 1, 5, and 6 that with the QRS upright, you would expect ST depression and T wave inversion, whereas in leads V1, 2, and 3, you would expect ST elevation. The final criteria for the ECG diagnosis of left bundle branch block are the presence of RS or QS complexes in right precordial leads. You will see these in leads V1, 2, and 3. In lead V1, you have a broad QS complex. In V2, depending on the beat, you have a QS or an RS complex. And then finally in V3, you have an RS complex. You've now learned the five ECG criteria for the diagnosis of left bundle branch block and should be ready for the CKG on morning rounds. Again, here's the 12 lead ECG. Remind yourself of all five criteria before completing this podcast.